Japanese scientists have conducted a survey of a fault running beneath a nuclear power plant on the Sea of Japan. In the wake of the 2011 nuclear accident, the government's new regulations ban the installation of nuclear reactors above faults that could shift in the future. Kunihiko Shimazaki of the Nuclear Regulation Authority and four scientists began a two-day inspection of the Shika nuclear plant in Ishikawa Prefecture. They descended into a 40-meter deep pit near the number one reactor and entered a tunnel dug to examine the fault's condition. Shimazaki and the others will try to determine whether the fault under one of the reactors is active. The plant operator has denied the possibility. Restarting the idle reactors at the Shika plant depends on this inspection. NRA officials and scientists also plan to check another fault located 1.4 kilometers east of the plant. The people in charge of another Japanese nuclear plant are pushing to restart their operations. They want officials to screen their safety measures for the Tokai No. 2 facility north of Tokyo. They say first they'll try to get backing from leaders of nearby municipalities. Officials with Japan Atomic Power Company say they'll conclude a memorandum with leaders of 11 municipalities as soon as next week. They promise to give those leaders an explanation before asking nuclear regulators to screen their safety measures. And they promise to get the support of the six municipalities nearest the plant. Analysts say the memorandum will give local governments a stronger voice as the firm will have to address their concerns. Company officials want to apply for screening of their safety plans as early as the end of next month. Nearly one million people within 30 kilometers of the plant would have to leave their homes in the event of an accident. Some municipalities have no evacuation plans. Japanese nuclear regulators are screening safety plans for a reactor in a potentially dangerous area. Operators want to put the plant back online, despite the possibility of a megaquake. Members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority spoke with representatives of Chubu Electric Power Company. They wanted to know about safety measures staff have put in place for the Hamaoka plant in central Japan. Staff asked the regulators earlier this month to check their safety measures for the plant's number four reactor. They have to satisfy tougher new government guidelines before they can restart any reactor. Company representatives said they're building a 22-meter breakwater in case of a tsunami. Regulators ask how they'd study the possible effects of an earthquake when data on the focal area are limited. And they asked how badly a tsunami could damage facilities that cool the reactors. Plant operators shut down their reactors two months after the Fukushima nuclear accident in 2011. Government officials asked them to take the facilities offline because they were concerned about the possibility of a megaquake. Japanese power companies have applied for safety screenings for 17 reactors at 10 plants. That's one-third of the reactors across the nation. All of Japan's nuclear plants are offline. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority has decided to prioritize their safety screening process for one of the nation's nuclear plants. This means the plant in southwestern Japan will likely be the first to clear the first hurdle towards a resumption of operations. The authority announced the screening prioritization for the number one and two reactors at the Sendai nuclear plant in Kagoshima Prefecture. The plant is operated by Kyushu Electric Power Company. All of Japan's 48 commercial reactors are now offline. They must pass the screening before being reactivated. The authority discussed whether to speed up procedures for the six of the ten nuclear plants now in the advanced stages of the safety review. Prioritization includes confirmation of the maximum levels of expected earthquakes and the height of possible tsunami. The operator has raised its estimate for the maximum levels of tremors and tsunamis. The authority will issue a report on the results of the safety review process. It will allow a restart after lis listening to experts' views and holding public hearings in the prefecture. Kyushu Electric hopes to resume operations at the Sendai plant before demand surges in the summer months. But still ahead for the utility is future on-site inspections and persuading local residents that restarting the reactors is safe. 
Japanese government officials have shown the surest sign yet that they intend to make nuclear power a key part of Japan's future. They've drafted a policy that describes it as an important energy source. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa has more. We will figure out how much nuclear power we need, and we will secure that amount. The draft document adopted by a group of cabinet ministers endorses a major change in Japan's energy policy. The nuclear accident in Fukushima three years ago triggered a nationwide debate over nuclear power. The ruling party at that time promises to phase out nuclear energy within 30 years. Shinzo Abe's return to power in the December 2012 election changed the situation. The prime minister called the elimination of nuclear power irresponsible. The draft energy policy adopted on Tuesday says the government will restart reactors once they clear the latest safety regulations. The document also underlines the need to learn from the nuclear accident and the importance of safety. But some people question whether it is really safe to resume operations at nuclear power plants. Among them is the governor of Niigata. His prefecture hosts the world's largest nuclear plant operated by Tokyo Electric Power Company. TEPCO hasn't learned from the Fukushima accident. It's not qualified to operate nuclear plants. Paul Scalise is an expert on Japan's energy policy. He explains the rationale behind the government's renewed emphasis on nuclear power. You have Japan's very precarious lack of natural resources uh, and the hope that by moving away from fossil fuels like imported gas, oil and coal, uh, that you can avoid the very disruptive uh, shocks to both electricity prices as well as gas prices that took place in the 1970s. Scalise says the energy policy will be welcomed by the business community. But he adds the utilities and the government need to display more transparency in order to convince the general public. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. Now, an NHK survey has found that most people in Japan still have serious misgivings about nuclear power three years on from the March 2011 disaster. NHK's Broadcasting Culture Research Institute conducted the nationwide survey late last year. Among 3,600 people, 68% responded. People were asked if they are concerned about the possibility of nuclear accidents that could affect those living in the area. 37% said they were very concerned and 50% said they were somewhat concerned. 14% said they had little or no concern. The survey also asked about restarting those nuclear reactors that are now offline. 44% said they should not be restarted. Another 44% were undecided and only 11% said the reactors should go into operation again. Asked about how the government should deal with existing nuclear reactors, 46% said the number should be reduced. 30% said all of them should be demolished. That number was 10 percentage points higher than the figure two years ago. And 22% said the number of reactors should be maintained at the current level. Only 1% said new reactors should be added. The survey also asked if people, if people they were worried about the situation at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. 95% said yes, while only 5% said they had little or no concern. Researchers at the NHK Institute say conditions at Fukushima Daiichi have likely influenced public opinion about the future of nuclear energy in the country. A U.S. nuclear expert has stressed the need to prepare for accidents at nuclear plants. The former head of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission told NHK that there is no way to completely prevent them people have to focus more on the consequences of the accident and look at ways not just to reduce the chance of an accident happening but to really look at the fundamental design of the reactors to see what can be done to actually prevent or reduce 
the consequences that we saw from, from the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Yatsuko said restarting Japan's nuclear power plants won't be justified unless the public supports the move.